How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Overstructure Reviews. Today, we're looking at another product from Scale Train. We're looking at a Scale Train's rivet counter Trinity 31,000 gallon crude oil tank car, and this is for Phillips 66 and Co. Or and it's road name PPRX664119. And you, as you can see, it has the 1202 diesel placard. So I actually ended up buying three of these, all for Phillips 66. But we're gonna go ahead and obviously review just one of them. Here it is, and it's a lovely Scale Trains box. So it looks very nice indeed. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this thing opened here. So inside the box, we have a oops, we have a diagram, an exploded diagram. Once we pull open this up specifically, here it is. There is the ooh, that's a large exploded diagram. But as you can see, it is quite large indeed. This this also tells us, like for instance some uh, instruction sheets, as well as a few other things like additional parts and such. And it also has the history of this tank car, so we will definitely have a history part. We also have a little bag here, and this contains spare rolling end caps, and as you can see, they are the blue color, which is very nice indeed. Let's get this box out of the way. Let's get this clear plastic off. And this is River Counter, so this is the top of the line when it comes to their freight cars, which means it's gonna be heavy with detail. Try to get this out of here without breaking anything. And right off the bat, I can already tell this is, has a good weight to it, so I'm quite happy with that. All right, with unboxing out of the way, let's get into some history. And now onto some history. Since 2012, Trinity Rail has built thousands of these 31,000 gallon crude oil tank cars to meet the growing needs of the oil industry. Mile long unit trains with 100 plus cars crisscross the United States and Canada daily to deliver crude from the oil fields of North Dakota, Wyoming, and Montana to refineries on the East, Gulf, and West Coasts. The Trinity Rail tank car is easily recognizable by its unique trapezoid-shaped end shields, which is right here. All right, now with history out of the way, let us get into some details, starting with the A and B ends. Alrighty, so we're currently looking at the B end of the car, and it's called the B end because it has the brake wheel right here. At the top here, we have our reporting marks, PPRX664119. Our, capa our capacity in U.S. gallons as well as in liters. Here is a handrail, just to right in front of the tank, the heat shield, which is a quite large trapezoidal shape. We have a, we have more lettering right here. It says M90E1E DFTGR 36 inch 1W Class C wheels, springs, as well as a few other things as well. We have our heat shield right here behind all of this. Here's our brake wheel, there's the brake chain, and here is the safety placard, which is a 12023, that is the diesel safety placard. And we have one on either side. You can see the walkway right here, as well as the knuckle, right, the knuckle coupler right here, which is a little stiff, and I'm a, that's a little interesting indeed. Our coupler cup bar right here, and there's our air brake hose. It's pretty much the same on the other side, minus the fact that there is no brake wheel or chain. And there is that lovely, you can get a better view of that diesel fuel placard right there. All right, so now let's look at some side detail. Looking at the side of the car now, immediately you can see the step that leads up to the walkway right here. There is this device. I'm not exactly sure what it is, so if anybody does know, please let me know in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate it. We have two inch HF comp shoes right here. Here's the amazing truck detail. As you can see, it even has reporting marks, PPRX664119. We have our uh, roller end caps, and just to, to prove they do roll, there they go. We have our FRA sill stripes, or like mandatory sill stripes right here, or safety stripes, whatever you want to call them. PPRX664119, as well as the load limit, load weight in pounds and also in kilograms. You can see a plate C. As we move the car along, you can see the large amount of piping that's all over the car here. We have our step ladder that works our way to the top of the car where it will be loaded. We will look at that when we look at the top of the car. We have some more legible writing right here, like consult owner before repairing tank. Sharp objects must not contact lining. Do not steam or clean tank with boiling water or caustic soda. You can see as we move the car along here, we have more safety stripes as well as how to un how to use the latch to un to uh, unload the car. We have some more unlettering here. Vent take when unloading. We have another. So this plaque right here is a emergency phone number plaque. So let's say this tank starts leaking and you need to get somebody out there right away. You have a choice of three phone numbers to um, call and hopefully somebody will respond. We have some more um, right here, like 
paint Strathmore. It's yes, it, I think it's about the paint. We have some more um, plaques right here, right here, and right here. Unfortunately, they are all illegible except for the AAR right there. There is the diesel fuel placard, twelve oh two, with the small three. It's pretty much the same on the other side. And we'll just quickly go through that, and the. And you also may notice these braces, these struts, that keep the t car attached to the, the trucks, which is very nice indeed. All right, so now let's look at the roof of the car. Looking at the roof of the car, you can see the reporting mark, which is unfortunately upside down here, PPRX664119. Up on where you would actually load the car, you can see the large hatch to open the car, and I believe this is the venting hatch for when you're unloading the car as well. And you can see some walkways to help you uh, navigate the curve of the tank car, as well as the handrails. And, this, and the walkways are see-through, and you can see the ladders that work their way down to the ground. All right, so now let's look at some uh, bottom detail. Looking on the underside of the car, you can see the piping, as well as the air brake, air brake over right here, as well as how the air brakes actually work. So those pipings, as well as the fuel pipes as well. And you can actually see the little hole that is used to unload the tank car as well this is where the this is where the latch would be to unhook the cover of the hole which is very nice indeed and as you can see it gravitates so everything comes out from either side and it gravitates towards the center as it is being unloaded all righty so let's get into my final thoughts so overall this is a very good looking piece of rolling stock it has great detail it also has really great weight that was the very important thing for me because I find that most manufacturers don't weight their freight cars to like a proper weight. I mean, obviously they go with um, NMRA standards on certain like rolling stock like box cars. They don't have to be super heavy, but like certain cars like tank cars or flat cars and such, they need to be heavier because they might be mostly plastic, which is what this uh, freight car is. But anyway, I got mine off of Lombard Hobbies, and I will put a link to their uh, website in the description down below. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Also, subscribe if you have not, and hit that notification bell to see what I have to upload next. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.